Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh and you're watching Our History. Today we are continuing with the great track, The First Wave. The first wave of fur trackers lasted from 1835 to 1840, during which an estimated 6,000 people, roughly 20% of the Cape Colony's total population or 10% of the white population in the 1830s, trekked. The first two parties of fur trackers left in September 1835, led by Louis Trechardt and Hans van Rensburg. These two parties crossed the Fall Rafir at Roberts Drift, January 1836. But in April 1836, the two parties split up just 70 miles from the Zoutspansberg Mountains, following differences between Trechardt and van Rensburg. A party led by Hendrik Potgieter trekked out of the Tarka area in either late 1835 or early 1836 and in September 1836 a party led by Gerrit Meritz began their trek from Graf Renet. There was no clear consensus amongst the trekkers on where they were going to settle but they all had the goal of settling near an outlet to the sea. In late July 1836 Van Rensburg's entire party of 49, except two children, who were saved by a Zulu warrior, were massacred at Inhambe by an impi, a force of warriors, of Manukosi. Those of Trechot's party that had set up around Sotspansberg moved on to colonize Dalgoa Bay, with most of the party, including Trechot, perishing from fever. Conflict with the Matabele in August 1836, despite pre-existing peace agreements with the local black leaders, a Ndebele or Matabele patrol attacked the Liebenberg family, part of Potgieter's party, killing six men, two women and six children. It is thought that their primary aim was to plunder the Voortrakkers cattle. On the 20th of October 1836, Potgieter's party was attacked by an army of 4,600 Ndebele warriors at the Battle of Fagkop. 35 armed trackers repulsed the Ndebele assault on their lager with the loss of two men and almost all the trackers' cattle. Potgieter, Ace and Maritz mounted two punitive commando raids. The first resulted in the sacking of the Ndebele colony at Mosecha, the death of about 400 Ndebele and the taking of 7,000 cattle. The second commando forced them Zilikazi and his followers to flee to what is now modern-day Zimbabwe. By spring 1837, five to six large fur tracker colonies had been established between the Fall and Orange Rivers with a total population of around 2,000 trekkers. Conflict with the Zulu In October 1837, Retief met with King Dingane to negotiate a treaty for land in what was now KwaZulu-Natal. King Dingani, suspicious and untrusting because of previous fur tracker influxes from across the Drakensberg, had Retief and 70 of his followers killed. Various interpretations of what transpired exist, as only the missionary Francis Owen's written eyewitness account survived. Retief's written request for land contained veiled threats by referring to the fur tracker's defeat of indigenous groups encountered along their journey. The Voortrakke demand for a written contract guaranteeing private property ownership was incompatible with the contemporaneous Zulu oral culture which prescribed that a chief could only temporarily dispense land as it was communally owned. Most versions agree that the following happened. King Dingani's authority extended over some of the land which the Boers wanted to settle. Requisite to granting the Voortrakke request he demanded that the fur trackers return some stolen cattle by Sekonyela, a rival chief. After the Boers retrieved the cattle, King Dingani invited Retief to his residence at Mkungunglovu to finalize the treaty, having either planned the massacre in advance or deciding to do so after Retief and his men arrived. King Dingani's reputed instructions to his warriors, Bulalani Abatakati, Zulu for kill the wizards, may indicate that he considered the Boers to wield evil supernatural powers. After killing Retief's delegation, 
a Zulu army of 7,000 impis were sent out and immediately attacked fur tracker encampments in the Drakensberg foothills at what later was called Blaugrans and Viennen, leading to the Viennen massacre in which 532 people were killed, including 282 fur trackers, of whom 185 children and 250 Khoi Khoi and Basutu accompanying them. In contrast to earlier conflicts with the Corsa on the Eastern Cape frontier, the Zulus killed women and children along with men, wiping out half of the Natal contingent of fur trackers. The fur trackers retaliated with a 347 strong punitive raid against the Zulu, later known as the Flight Commander, supported by new arrivals from the Orange Free State. The fur trackers were roundly defeated by the 7,000 warriors at Italeni, southwest of Mgungulovo. The well known reluctance of Afrikaner leaders to submit to one another's leadership, which later hindered sustained success in the Anglo Boer Wars, was largely to blame. In November 1838, Andres Pretorius arrived with a commando of 60 armed trekkers and two cannon to assist in the defense. A few days later, on the 16th of December 1838, a force of 468 trackers, 3 Britons and 60 black allies fought against 10,000 to 12,000 Zulu impis at the Battle of Blood River. Pretorius's victory over the Zulu army led to a civil war within the Zulu nation as King Dingane's half-brother Mpande Kasenza Gakona aligned with the four trackers to overthrow the king and impose himself. Mpande sent 10,000 impis to assist the trekkers in follow-up expeditions against Dingane. After the defeat of the Zulu forces and the recovery of the treaty between Dingane and Retief from Retief's body, the four trekkers proclaimed the Natalia Republic. After Dingane's death, Mpande was proclaimed king and the Zulu nation allied with the short-lived Natalia Republic until its annexation by the British Empire in 1843. The Fur Tracker's guns offered them a technological advantage over the Zulu's traditional weaponry of short stabbing spears, fighting sticks and cattle hide shields. The Boers attributed their victory to a vow they made with God before the battle. If victorious, they and future generations would commemorate the day as a Sabbath. Thereafter, 16th of December was celebrated by the Boers as a public holiday first called Dingane's Day and later changed to the Day of the Vow. Post-apartheid, the name was changed to the Day of Reconciliation by the South African government in order to foster reconciliation between all South Africans. The Impact Conflict amongst the fur truckers was a problem because the track leveled out the pre-existing class hierarchy which had previously enforced discipline and thus social cohesion broke down. Instead, the Trek leaders became more reliant on patriarchal family structure and military reputation to maintain control over their parties. This had a large and lasting impact on Africana culture and society. Centenary Celebrations The celebration of the Great Trek in the 1930s played a major role in their growth of Afrikaans nationalism. It is thought that the experiences of the Second Boer War and the following period between 1906 and 1934 of a lack of public discussion about the war in the Afrikaans community helped set the scene for a large increase in the interest in Afrikaans national identity. The celebration of the centenary of the Great Trek along with a new generation of Afrikaners interested in learning about the Afrikaans experiences of the Boer War catalyzed a surge of Afrikaans nationalism. The centenary celebrations began with a reenactment of the trek beginning on the 8th of August 1938 with nine ox wagons at the statue of Jan van Riebeek in Cape Town and ended with the newly completed Voortrakke monument in Pretoria and attended by over 100,000 people. A second reenactment track started at the same time and place ended at the scene of the Battle of Blood River. 
The commemoration sparked mass enthusiasm amongst Afrikaners as the reenactment trek passed through small towns and cities of South Africa. Both participants and spectators participated by dressing in food trucker clothing, renaming streets, holding ceremonies, erecting monuments and laying wreaths at the graves of Afrikaner heroes. Cooking meals over an open fire in the same way the food truckers did became fashionable amongst urbanites, giving birth to the South African tradition of braaing. An Afrikaans language epic was made to coincide with the 100th anniversary of the great track, Di Bo Nasi, from 1938. The film told the Afrikaans version of the history of South Africa from 1652 to 1910 with the focus on the great track. A number of Afrikaans organizations such as the Afrikaans Broederbond and Afrikaans Taal in Kultuur Vereniging continued to promote the centenary's goals of furthering the Afrikaner cause and entrenching a greater sense of unity and solidarity within the community well into the 20th century. Political Impact The Great Trek was used by Afrikaner nationalists as a core symbol of, an Af of a common Afrikaans history. It was used to promote the idea of an Afrikaans nation and a narrative that promoted the ideals of the National Party. In 1938, celebrations of the centenary of the Battle of Blood River and the Great Trek mobilized behind an Afrikaans nationalist thesis. The narrative of Afrikaner nationalism was a significant reason for the National Party's victory in the 1948 elections. This in turn allowed the party to implement its stage program of apartheid. A year later, a Voortrekker monument was completed and opened in Pretoria by the newly elected South African Prime Minister and National Party member Daniel Malan in 1949. A few years later, Die Stem van South Africa, The Voice of South Africa, a poem written by Cornelius Jacobus Langenhoven, referring to the Great Trek, was chosen to be the words of the pre-1994 South African National Anthem. The post-1997 National Anthem of South Africa incorporates the section of the Stem van South Africa, but it was decided to omit the section in reference to the Great Trek, Medikrian van die since this was the experience of only one section of our community. When apartheid in South Africa ended and the country transitioned to majority rule, President F. W. de Klerk invoked the measures as a new great trek. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please smash the like button and please be friendly to that subscribe button and the notification bell. And YouTube will let you know as soon as our next is released. Stay safe and stay strong.